In the 1880s, a murderous beast was terrorizing the territory of Arizona. It was known as the Red Ghost. As it roamed the land, truth mixed with tall tales, and the story of the Red Ghost grew into a legend of the West. One morning in 1883, two women were doing their morning chores. At one point, one of the women left the house to go get water at a nearby spring a few yards away. The other woman was alerted by a barking dog and screams from her friend. She quickly ran to the window, but all she was able to make out was something that was big, red, and ridden by the devil. Strict with fear, she dared not go outside. When the men returned to the house, they went to investigate. They found the body of the woman trampled nearly flat with huge hoof prints twice the size of a horse and a clump of red hair. A few nights later, a couple of miners were woken up in the middle of the night when their tent came crashing down on top of them. They said they heard a loud, unrecognizable scream and the sound of pounding hooves. When the two finally emerged from their tent, they made out a large silhouette crashing through the brush. This mysterious beast left another clump of red hair behind. Other stories quickly spread about the red ghost, One man said he chased the beast and watched it vanish before his eyes. Another claimed he saw the red ghost kill and devour a grizzly bear. But the truth behind this legend was that the red ghost was a feral camel. And its story started in 1855 with Secretary of War Jefferson Davis. In a time before the Transcontinental Railroad, getting supplies across the United States was a challenging feat. In an effort to solve this problem, Congress approved a $30,000 budget to purchase camels from the Middle East. Davis believed these camels would be perfectly suited to carry supplies across the harsh Texas desert, and in 1857, 75 camels were purchased and put to work in the United States Army. They were stationed in Camp Verde in Central Texas and were often sent out on short supply runs to San Antonio. But in the month of June, Edward Fitzgerald Bill would lead two dozen camels on an expedition to California. The journey took five months to complete, but by the end, the camels had proven their worth. These camels were driven over 1,200 miles in the middle of summer, in a barren land with scarce water and food, and over mountainous terrain, and did so surprisingly well. Despite their success, Congress did not approve further imports of camels. This was largely due to the mule lobbyists who felt threatened by the success of the camels. The camel experiment would come to a close with the start of the Civil War. After Texas seceded from the Union, Confederate forces quickly took over Camp Verde and its camels. Seeing no use for the beasts, the Confederates cut the camels loose and left them free to graze and wander. These camels would find themselves scattered through history. Some ended up in zoos. Others became feral and reported sightings lasted until 1929. One camel became part of the 43rd Mississippi Infantry and was nicknamed Old Douglas. However, it met its end at the Siege of Vicksburg. The Red Ghost was one of those feral camels, and the true story is that the Red Ghost did trample a woman in 1883, and the story from the two miners is believed to be truthful as well. It wasn't until a rancher named Cyrus Hamblin spotted the Red Ghost across a ravine that its true identity was known. At the time, not many people would be able to recognize a camel. However, Hamblin spent several years in the southern part of California and saw some of the camels brought in by Bill. Hamblin states that there was something odd about the hump of the camel. Because of the distance, he couldn't clearly make it out, but said that it appeared to be a silhouette of a man strapped to its back. No one doubted Hamlin's word that he saw the red ghost and that it was just a camel, but many believed he just saw the hump of the camel's back and nothing more. A few weeks later, a group of prospectors sighted the red ghost and moved within shooting range. The men let loose a volley of shots, and as the camel fled, they spotted something white fall off the back. The men quickly ran over, and to their disbelief and Hamlin's credit, it was a human skull with bits of scalp and hair still attached. The great legend and mystery behind the Red Ghost finally came to an end when Mizzou Hastings spotted the Red Ghost feeding on his turnip patch. With one shot, he dropped the camel. When Mizzou examined the body, he described that the camel was all scarred up and had rawhide straps tied around its body. Some of these straps were on this camel so long that they were fused to its flesh. And on the camel's back were the remains of a dead man.